fault and fault with wiring on this. I ordered one of them cheap Amazon harnesses and I've had to repaint almost half of it. So. Alright guys, we are back in the shop. So I've done a few things since. I've pretty much buttoned up the wiring on it. So I got everything to fit back in the fuse box. I mean, obviously I still got to put the front end with the front end harness hooked to it. Uh, still could use a little work on cleaning up, but overall it's pretty decent. So if you didn't see the short where I did the first fire up, I'm gonna jump in here real quick and uh, let y'all see it run. So let's go ahead and jump on in the inside and fire this thing off. I can also show you that I got pretty well all the factory gauges working with the standalone harness. So all pressure and everything will work. So as you see, everything's running, burning off a little bit of oil and stuff that was on the headers. If you look underneath, no leaks. So we're good there. So now I just gotta go ahead and slap this front end on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to work on that and then fill it with a little trick to let you guys know about because racetracks don't allow you to run coolant. You can actually fill your radiator with that uh, like negative 32 degree washer fluid that way it don't freeze in the winter and you still ain't running coolant so the track don't cause issues with you if you start a leak because they will kick you out if you leak coolant on the track so that's a quick tip for you guys that might run the track a lot or something you can put the negative 32 degree windshield washer fluid in there to stop it from freezing or whatever and still uh, run the track without coolant and just straight water even in the winter time so I'm gonna go ahead and get to putting the front end on this. And once I get the front end and everything, the fluid's topped off for the radiator and stuff, I guess we could go ahead and lower it down and we'll try to pull it on out the shop. All right, so I got the whole front end back on the truck. She is off the jacks and everything now on the ground. Uh, I fought and fought with wiring on this. I ordered one of them cheap Amazon harnesses and I've had to repaint almost half of it. So I don't, I'm not gonna recommend that harness for you. Uh, they have number five and four coil pinned backwards. So when they're trying to fire the opposite coil they're supposed to, that was causing like little backfires and stuff through the exhaust, obviously, uh, because it'd be on the exhaust stroke and it fire the coal since it was firing the wrong one. Uh, then after I got that squared away, I still had number eight misfire. Well, number eight coal and my intake air temp signal wire, those two pins was backwards in the harness. So I had to repin that to get number eight coal working. And then the mass airflow intake air temp sensor, four out of the five wires was in the wrong spot on the connector. So I had to repin it in the connector that plugged up. So. I had to do that, even though I ain't running a mass airflow, I still used the intake air temp sense, sir, so, but I went ahead and straightened them all out. Uh, and again, the other intake air temp sensor wire was mixed up with the speedometer signal wire, so I had to repin that. So I was chasing down a bunch of problems with electrical, but now everything's sorted. Um, I tried to just do a rough guess on the injector data for these bigger injectors uh, to run with the stock motor. And my fuel graph looked all wonky or whatever. It was like, 
just to get it to run decent. I was basically having to double the fuel at idle. It was actually requiring more fuel to idle than wide open throttle based off the fuel graph. So I knew something was up there. Went in. Uh, Fast doesn't give you injector data when you order their injectors. So if you go with fast injectors like I have, just know that you're gonna have to figure out something for injector data because they don't give it to you. Now what I did is I went to Deechworks website, looked at their 88 pound injector, and took all the injector data from their 88 pounds since they offer it right there on their website, plugged that into the ECU and it's got it pretty close now. So it fires up and it runs pretty good. I hadn't actually gone out and done fuel tuning, but I've just done a couple checks to make sure that was like, it was all good. So now it, like I can just run the stock fuel graph and it runs the truck pretty decent. Uh, so that's a good sign. But, uh, and then I'm gonna jump in here and we'll fire it up now with all the exhaust and everything on it and let you see how it runs. obviously leaning out to like 14.7 idling. If you hear that rattle, I got an exhaust clamp that I lost some nut for, so the clamp's just rattling on the exhaust, so I gotta take care of that. Uh, but yeah, truck runs good, fires right up. Uh, she's pretty peppy. Uh, guess we'll go ahead and we'll pull it on out the shop and we'll go take it down the road and see how it does on the street. because I know the LEDs mess with the camera, but you see the fuel is still ain't perfectly right. Uh, but she's close enough to run decent. Also, I got a squeak on a bushing, I guess, just from sitting up for a while, so I'll probably have to grease that bushing. But let's go, we're going to jump out here on the road, take a spin, and we might make a little quick hit on it and see what she'll do. Got the data logger and everything already over here running. do like a quick little uh, 35 mile an hour road roll we'll watch the air fuel all right so we're at 35 that's 85 just like that so for a bone stop motor she rolls pretty dang good air fuel wasn't too terrible at wide open throttle is running 
it was like 13 and a half. But that, I'm glad I put this dang transmission out that parts truck, that GM Performance transmission, because this, this thing is hitting the next gear pretty dang quick. It ain't sluggish at all. It'll grab that next gear. Uh, I'm going to take it on down here to this road out here in Mexico. And uh, we're going to put it on the stall, see how far up the stall it go, and do a hit from a dig and see how she does. All right, so we're out here on this uh, little road in the middle of nowhere. It's just pretty much a straight path. Uh, like I said, no prep surface, and we're going to see what it do. Um, put it on the converter and see how she launches. We'll see how much we can brake stall it up to. So it looks like we can get about three grand out the converter. So let's make a hit. in pretty good she fit down and went uh, she doing a little bit of uh, slipping there off the line but for the most part she just grabbed and went so I'm gonna go down here on this same road we'll set the camera off to the side and let you get an outside view of the a pool So as you've seen, the truck is actually running pretty dang good considering I ain't really done no fuel tuning yet. Uh, we'll look at some data logs real quick from going out just now. So first thing I'm gonna look at, uh, we can pull this down. So you can see she's really rich in there and then kind of lean in the mid range. So I have to definitely go in and do some fuel tuning on it. Uh, we'll look at uh, one, of, one of the runs real fast. So you see here, I think this was the first pull I did with y'all. Uh, we can look at the stall test real quick. So you can see right there, it actually started to, it goes from zero mile an hour I don't know how well you can see that in red, but it's, yeah, zero. Right there, it just ticks to one. So right here, we're sitting at zero, and like I said, it goes right there to about 3,000 on the stall when I stalled it up, which is saying it's about 350 foot-pounds of torque and 202 horses right there when it's coming off the line. And then right here is where we made our pool. Uh, and you see this commanding, this commanding 12.19, it's really seeing uh, 15 on the AFR. So it's actually pretty lean up there. Uh, I got the timing turned down too, so it ain't gonna really hurt it. Uh, but, uh, so I definitely could pick up some more by bringing the fuel to where it needs to be and also uh, throwing some a little more timing at it. And also, uh, so the shift point it sh shifted kind of early at 4,800 there from one to two. And then second gear, it looks like it shifted at about five. So she's shifting kind of early. I bumped the shift points up a little bit and I put in a math uh, equation that converts the calculated torque engine to make into horsepower. And th this is crank numbers, by the way, this ain't at the tire. This is what's that the transmission is seeing. So it looks like she hits about 360s on the horsepower, which is probably pretty close. I think stop, they made like 310. So with the headers and uh, all that little stuff or whatever, the cold air intake headers, just those simple little bolt tones, whatever it is making a little more. So about 
maybe 40 or 50 more. And I mean, I'm sure this isn't like dead on precise, but it, it is pretty close uh, from me testing past before. So yeah, so it's saying about 360 horses at the crank. So that's not bad for a bone stop motor with just a couple of my bolt arms swapped over. And uh, looks, looks like about, Torque curve is pretty flat because, like I said, I didn't uh, shift in early, it didn't carry all the way out to where it's really starting to fall off. But yeah, it's looking like 390 foot pounds of torque. So, pretty dang good for a stop motor. Uh, and, like I said, get the fuel trims and everything squared away, and that'd be good. And uh, start adding some timing into it. But yeah, truck is running awesome. I'm happy with it. Uh, <laughs> include a blooper on one of the runs because I haven't mounted an ECU to the firewall yet. When I launched it on that second one with outside view, the ECU kind of slid back and kind of disconnected the connector a little bit. So it shut the truck down. So it sputtered and shut down. It lost a signal on the cam sensor pin on the ECU when it pulled on the plug. So I'm gonna include that just for fun. Uh, just a little mishap in the video recording process and me not spending time to go ahead and mount the ECU, but. Yeah, truck's running awesome. It was making good power. It's pretty dang quick. Brian, I think I may, with the way it's running and how good it comes off the line, I think I may be able to outdo you with this stock engine with this truck. So we're gonna get it to the track and see, but stay tuned for the next video. Next video, we're probably gonna get up with Robbie Stafford and we're gonna slap it on the dyno and see what it actually puts to the tire on his dyno and get my fuel and timing tuned in on the dyno just to set it for where it's gonna make the best power. All right, guys, I appreciate y'all. Stay tuned for upcoming videos. Please slap that subscribe button down here in the corner and uh, hit the like button. All right, guys, have a good one. All right, guys, so we got the Frost Garage gear in. So I am wearing the sweatshirt now with the Rat Rod logo. We got the Silverado logo on sweatshirts. We got the laptop backpack for carrying your laptop to the track or whatever else you need to carry your laptop for. We got t-shirts. We also got thermoses, coffee mugs, and a bunch of other products. So if you wanna go down below, check out uh, the different apparel and uh, accessories we have and get you something nice. Uh, don't forget to check out too to hit the redeem coupon. There's always different coupon codes running, anything from free shipping all the way up to 25% off, depending on the time of the year or the holiday. All right, guys, thank you.